Hey everybody, my name is Todd Spadaro. I'm the assistant principal at Dunlow Elementary. I'm really excited to be able to share this video with you today. Um, our staff had a really uh, great book study this summer that we, we had a chance to participate in um, over the book called For White Folks Who Teach in the Hood and the Rest of Y'all Too, Reality Pedagogy and Urban Education, written by Dr. Christopher Emden. And, uh, the plan originally was for me to get up here and, and kind of talk to you about this book and how it impacted me as a leader and, and how it kind of impacted our building and our staff and how it made us really question what we do in the classroom every day and how we incorporate student voice, how we connect with our students inside and outside of the classroom, um, what our instruction looks like and, and how much we're really taking into context who our students really are and how they're different from us in so, so many ways and learning about that. And um, uh, it, it's, an, it's a really amazing book that really challenges you to reflect and think about everything we, we do and what Emden refers to as a traditional school model and a traditional school setting. And the timing of us reading this book could not have been better because at this time, when we were reading this back in June, we were right in the midst of, of the aftermath of George Floyd's death and protests and riots and rallies and everything happening all over the country. And we're, we're witnessing in first person this huge civil rights movement that's still continuing to go on today. And the conversations we had with our students at that time were essentially, you know, if you think our students aren't gonna come back to the classroom in the fall different, and, and thinking about this, then you're crazy. And uh, that, that kind of drove all of our conversations. Um, the book for white folks who teach in the hood was written by Dr. Christopher Emden. He's a uh, professor at Teachers College of Columbia University in New York. And he's worked in urban education for his entire career. He has PhD, multiple master's degrees, and a few bachelor's degrees as well. Um, the, the book is primarily aimed at teaching teachers how they can connect to different cultures and foster success, mostly when teaching black students in urban poor schools. Um, but it, he, he's very clear in saying, you know, while it's aimed at black cultures found in the inner city, the advice here applies to anyone teaching students from a cultural background that's not their own. And, you know, as you saw, we have some real work to do in, in our school district, and we have disparities that are real and that we have to confront, we have to take on, and we have to be willing to reflect on and say we have to do better. And this book really challenged our staff to, to take on all those different things. Um, I can't recommend it enough. Uh, it's a dense book. There's a lot of really good stuff in it. If I flip through it, you're going to see yellow all over the place because I wanted to highlight just about every single thing in here. Um, I read this book a few years back as uh, an educator. Um, I was a special education teacher working on the west side of Columbus in an urban school environment, and it totally changed my whole perspective on what I did in the classroom and, and made me examine school-wide policies and all kinds of different things. And, you know, I think the most important for us, most important thing for us to understand at this point in time is we have to recognize where we are and our job is, is not to be perfect, is not to say the perfect thing all the time and not always, you know, we're going to make mistakes, but our, our job is to constantly grow. And I think the most important thing we took away from this, this book was that we were growing as human beings not, and not just educators. And I think that was one of the most important things to us. Um, all the chapters in this book are, are really great. They, um, he, he gives very practical applications for things we can do in our classroom today and tomorrow um, to bring in real student voice, to really connect to our students and see them as individuals and start squashing down this, what he refers to as this traditional school model um, you know, that, that stems from putting students in a box and making them be this certain way instead of recognizing who they are and recognizing that black culture is different from our culture. Cultures of socioeconomic status that are different than what we grew up in are different. They have different values. They have different core beliefs. And just because those are different, in our, different than ours doesn't make them better or worse. Um, one of the most important things we talked about is you're not able to serve somebody that you think you're better than. 
And that's something we have to constantly check ourselves with. And, you know, when we make judgments and we cast judgment upon families for, you know, spending money on shoes and, and sneakers and clothes, but that same student can't come to school with a notebook or pencils or a book bag, we're casting judgment. That's not our place to do that. And we have to recognize, and he talks about in great detail in this, in this book, how different things are valued in different cultures, that being an example of one. Um, he talks about ways we can do real simple things like um, the type of shoes we wear to school. Um, sneaker culture is a real thing and in urban, urban youth, I don't know how much you guys pay attention to the shoes that your kids wear, but that's literally how I find out what are the coolest sneakers going on right now. I take a look at all of our kids' feet in the hallway and I take it a step further and I try to add to that collection and I try to get cool sneakers that I know that they're going to start conversations with or I can engage with parents and families about because that's a really easy way for me as a leader in a building to throw on a pair of sneakers every day with a shirt and a tie or with a polo shirt and still be professional but be able to connect to our students on a different level. Um, instead of me standing here and talking about this whole book forever because I know how boring that would be. Um, I, I'm going to let you guys listen to some of our building staff at, at Dunlow and some of the people who participated in our book study and how uh, they were changed as educators and how it really impacted them and made them reflect on their teaching and, and how coming into this next school year and moving forward, um, things are going to be different for them. And, and uh, they're going to share some of Dr. Emden's personal musings that he um, he talks about at the end of the book and he talks about, you know, when when times are tough, you know, when our profession is being bashed, when we feel like there's no energy, there's no hope at the end of the tunnel, we're lost, you know, we want to break down. We have to remember why we do this and we have to remember why we're here. And in the forefront of every decision we ever make should always be what's best for our kids. So with that, I'm going to turn it over. Um, I'm going to welcome you to some of some of our Dunlow staff and, and a few others who participated in our book study. And they're, they're going to share some pretty powerful and meaningful things that they took away um, from this book this summer. So I hope you guys enjoy. Thanks. Hi, Cruisers. My name is Siobhan Grimm, and I teach third grade at Dunlow Elementary. The passage I chose to share with you today is as follows. The way that a teacher teaches can be traced directly back to the way that teacher has been taught. That time will always come when teachers must ask themselves if they will follow the mold or blaze a new trail. There are serious risks that come to this decision. It essentially boils down to whether one chooses to do damage to the system or to the student. And that last sentence there is really what resonates with me. Do I do damage to the system? or to the student? Do I blaze the new trail for my students and accept their culture and bring that into the classroom and, and teach them with that and that that is good and wonderful and beautiful and build on that? Or do I give them a system that is based on my own community, white community, which I was raised in and that's how I was taught, um, coming from a pretty dominantly white suburb of Dayton. Um, and do I, do I hold that as a higher standard? I can't teach the student if I feel like my own way based on my whiteness is better than what they bring to the table. They need to know that what they have is good and enough and let's build on that and that is great. And this chapter um, and this point specifically really has me look at processes in my classroom and little ways that I can acknowledge that and celebrate that and bring that to the table for my students. Hi everyone, my name is Mallory Malera and I am a literacy coach supporting the elementary schools here at Groveport. Um, the second thought that Emden leaves us with in the story is the longer teachers teach, the better they are at their practice. The practice may serve to empower students or it may break the student's spirit. That decision belongs to the teacher. And for me, it really made me realize that experience and years of teaching doesn't necessarily matter if the content isn't rich and that really all of us as teachers and leaders need to be open to feedback and improving our practice no matter how much experience we may have. Hello, my name is Lindsay and I'm the SIS at Dunlow Elementary. Here's a thought on transformative teaching. If the teacher does not value the student, there is no motivation to engage with the student. To me, 
This means that by building relationships with each one of your students, you're building a foundation that is unbreakable. A student has to feel a sense of worth for you to teach them beyond their comfort zone. To me, risk is what makes experiences memorable and meaningful. Hi Cruisers, this is Wendy Eastep. I'm a reading specialist at Dunlow Elementary. The musing from Emden that I was reflecting on is that planning for your lesson is valuable, but being willing to let go of that plan is even more so. It is only on the path away from where you started that you can get to where you want to go. That caused me to think about when I'm planning my lessons, I need to be flexible enough to allow the students to take the lesson in a different direction if need be. In fact, I need to be willing to allow them to co-teach. Another quote from Emden on this topic that really resonated with me is the following. We teach students before curriculum. We reach souls before standards. We teach character before content. In that order, or it's not really teaching at all. Hi, I'm Miranda Conway and I'm a third grade teacher at Dunlow Elementary School. This will be my second year teaching and I loved being a part of this reading group. Um, Christopher Emden talks a lot about being an effective teacher. He says that you cannot be effective if you have not defined for yourself what effective means. I aligned this with the seven C's that he discusses throughout the book and it's really helped me change my view on how I plan to be effective this upcoming school year, not only in my actions but in the way I think and carry out those actions. Hello Cruisers, my name is Julie Dargish and I teach second grade. The idea that I'm sharing with you today is that the kind of teacher you will become is directly related to the kind of teachers you associate with. Teaching is a profession where misery does more than just love company. It recruits, seduces, and romances it. Avoid people who are unhappy and disgruntled about the possibilities for transforming education. They are the enemy of the spirit of the teacher. And this made me think about how there's so much negativity right now in the world and how negativity exists everywhere. Those people exist everywhere. And I think it's extremely important to surround yourself with positive, grateful, encouraging people and teachers in life. And we need to think about who we're letting influence us. Words matter so much. And I can compare this to being in tune with your body by like exercising and eating healthy. And we do that because it's good for us just like positive self-talk, um, along with listening to positive people is good for you um, and for your spirit and for your sense of purpose. In teaching, there's no room for allowing negative words to creep into your mind and into your thoughts. And so I want to have posit a positive attitude and um, positive words enter my mind and my heart. And I think if we strive to be positive and find that person at school or that other teacher that will listen to us and help us come up with solutions, um, we can better empower our students. Hi Cruisers, my name is Zoe Karstadt and I teach fifth grade. And then leaves us with this thought that you cannot teach somebody that you do not believe in. And this challenged me to reflect on what were the ways that I was communicating to them that I believed in them? How was I showing them that I thought that they could grow as a student? And moving forward, how can I make that even more apparent in my actions, in my words, in my lessons, so that every kid in my classroom feels that I believe in them and support them as learners?